Welcome back. You're watching the newsroom. This is our last broadcast from Davos for this year. You've seen many newsmakers speaking exclusively on India today, many global voices as well. I want to bring you now an exclusive conversation with chairman of the Pakistan People's Party, Benazir Bhutto's son, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. This is the first time Bilawal is speaking to an Indian news organization about everything that's said about him and about how he hopes to reset the India-Pakistan equation. Here is Bilawal Bhutto Zardari in an exclusive conversation with India Today. We're in one of the most stunning locations in Davos, right below the Magic Mountain. And joining us now on India Today is one of the most promising politicians of Pakistan. Benazir Bhutto's son, Asif Ali Zardari's son, Bilawal Bhutto. Welcome. This is his first interview to Indian news media. Welcome. Thank Mr. you Bhutto. for having me. It's a beautiful location. You have the prettiest view in town. How has Davos been for you so far? Uh, Davos has been an amazing experience. This has been my first trip to Davos, and I find it um, such an amazing opportunity for to have genuine discussions and an exchange of ideas. Um, uh, as you may know, I spoke on this panel. Uh, about fake news versus, versus real politics, which I think is a really interesting to uh, top topical uh, topic. We spoke at the first uh, counter-violent uh, extremism uh, event held at Davos. I co-hosted it with someone else, and I think that was really, really important. And I'm so glad that Davos has taken that step to address such an important Your issue. mother was a big Davos sensation, and they're all welcoming you back after a long time. How has... Uh how, what's your sense of India-Pakistan relations at this time? Given all the troubles our countries face, sitting where you are in the opposition in Pakistan, how do you view the India-Pakistan relationship? Well, I think it's plain for everyone to see that the India-Pakistan relationship isn't at, uh, at its best at the moment. Um, but I think that despite hostilities at both ties and genuine complaints, um, ultimate stand that the only solution is peace. We just have to figure out a way to get there. Okay, what would you like to do if you had an opportunity in the coming elections to reset the equilibrium, to work on the India-Pakistan relationship, what would you like to do? Look, I think there's things that need to happen on both sides. We need to understand uh, that when I, we look at India in Pakistan, we look at it through the eyes of the Pakistani media. And when Indians look at Pakistan, they look at it through the eyes of the Indian media. I think it's, it's uh, w the be best way forward w for, w would be for us to look at a more uh, median approach and take smaller steps on both sides to see how we can take uh, confidence building measures and build towards a process where we can start having but a discussion. All of this yeah. has been tried, Bilawal, in the they past, uh, on multiple occasions. With all a due sincerity, uh, I, I feel that the way India and the rest of the world approaches it is they think that they can just dictate to Pakistan how to do things, and that's not how a partnership works or builds. You have a conversation about what the reservations perhaps Pakistan may have uh, with, with India, and India will also have reservations about what's going on in Pakistan. You have those discussions, not in public, in front of cameras, you have those discussions behind closed doors. Unless that sort of situation is created, you have to understand in Pakistan for us, just as certain uh, individuals may cause anxiety uh, to uh, the people of India, um, you have to understand the rise of Hindu nationalism uh, recently in India. Uh, a perception within Pakistani media that India is moving away from that secular image also makes the Muslims of Pakistan insecure. So we have to understand that both of us come at this through uh, with anxieties, but the ultimate solution is only sitting together and finding peace. But the reality also is there are elements within Pakistan who don't seem to like the idea of peace with India. Our Prime Minister, soon into his term in office, in a very dramatic move, came to Rai Vind, met your Prime Minister at that time, and immediately after that there was a big terror attack in Pathan Court. Sir, um, your Prime Minister uh, has been elected by the Indian people and I, I respect the Indian people's mandate. Uh, his uh, image in, in, in Pakistan uh, after the incidents in Gurdjieff 
are not very positive. In the age of social media, you can't hide what's happening in Kashmir on either side or what's happening in, in Pakistan. But for, for us, to, for the social media in Pakistan to be seeing bullet-ridden bodies in Kashmir makes these sort of situations difficult and actually would need state-to-state -state cooperation. Mr. Modi's trip to Pakistan, uh, while perhaps intended to send a positive sign, by going to Mr. Sharif's a wedding engagement and not not following it up with any sort of state uh, cooperation sends uh, the image that they're just showing that they want to have peace actually aren't taking the concrete actions necessary. But what else could he do? For example, you've got an Indian Prime Minister coming to Pakistan, making that grand overture. Realistically speaking, that is what the Prime Minister could have done. He thought out of the box, tried to make something happen, and yet we saw how Pakistan responded. Because what do you think, Mr. Bhutto, about the likes of a Hafiz? Sir, about the likes of sir, a Hafiz I disagree. Said, yeah. if, you, if you look at the initial reaction to Mr. Modi's uh, uh, arrival in Pakistan, it was positive. Opposition parties even invited him. When it turned out that he was only there to attend the wedding, and there wasn't going to be any concrete steps taken towards an actual dialogue, then the reaction was very different because a personalized relationship is not is not going to solve nation's issues what kind of politician do you hope to be because you've had many generations of your family in politics you've seen your father you've seen your mother how would you like to calibrate your politics what kind of politician do you want to be I feel like Pakistan needs a genuine progressive a voice a progressive alternative to the uh, the populist hate-driven politics of the two other mainstream political parties. The Pakistan People's Party has always been a progressive force in Pakistan. And I feel that that's the way forward and that's the sort of politician that I'd like to be. You know, who do you think of as your principal adversary in Pakistan? Do you think it's going to be Shabash Sharif? Do you think of Imran Khan who calls you baby, baby Bhutto, he said. Who's your principal adversary? I don't really look at it in terms of adversaries. I'm doing this for the people of Pakistan and I'm doing this because I believe I'm following the mission of my mother. Uh, Mr. Shabash Sharif and Imran Khan have their own reasons for doing politics and you know what they say, if they can't fault you on the issues, if they can't fault you on what you've done, then they, you know, fall to the level of resulting to child schoolyard insults so that's all I have to say on that. So do you see a lot of comparisons with Rahul Gandhi in India in some senses you've been thrust into this job his mother too handing over to him recently the position of president of the Congress party do you see a comparison? Uh, obviously I can't take any uh, partisan view with uh, politi politicians in India but I can say that it's always positive to have young politicians uh, finding a space in, in national politics. I think it's about time that the younger generation come forward and we have some new ideas and a new way uh, and new solutions. No, but how would you deal with the issue of dynasty? How much of a problem is it in Pakistan for people to say, Are ye to hai. he's there because of his mother. What does he know about how to run Pakistan? Well, absolutely. I don't, you know, I don't know how much it, 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 it works in India, but as you know, in, in, in Pakistan, uh, my mother was assassinated. Uh, I didn't choose this life. It chose me. And the people of Pakistan uh, support me. They elect, they elect a political party that has me as a chairman. Uh, they come to my rallies. They do the things that obviously other people have the right to oppose me but I would like to think that oppose us on policies and genuine issues like we do other political parties. So what does Bilawal Bhutto do when he's not doing politics? I heard you're a black belt in Taekwondo? <laughs> that was a while ago. I was a black belt in Taekwondo before I do politics. Now I sleep, eat and breathe politics. Uh, at the moment, you know, we're heading into election seasons in Pakistan. The, inshallah, in 2018, the Pakistan People's Party uh, will be right back in the driving seat. Do you enjoy politics or is it something that's been thrust on you? It's absolutely something that has been thrust on you. Something that, uh, I didn't, as I said, I didn't choose. It chose me. But at the same time, uh, for a son, to be working towards what he believes is his mother's lifelong mission, I found great motivation and solace in that. Okay, tell me, how would you deal with the Pakistani army and its relationship with India? What do you mean? The Pakistani army is my army. Uh, and it doesn't have a relationship with India. The Pakistani state no, have a relationship. No, they keep messing with us and poking us and messing firing with you, poke with us. I'm sorry, you mess and poke with us as a state. Uh, and the Pakistani army needs to fight the terrorists. We need a strong, capable Pakistani army to defeat terrorism in Pakistan. And it does not serve my purpose or my country's purpose for me to in any way uh, criticize or diminish my brave armed forces while they're battling extremism in Pakistan. What do you make of Donald Trump attacking Pakistan in a whole bunch of tweets he's put out. He's now calling out Pakistan saying that you play a double game, that you've got 
the Haqqani network which is sheltered by the army. Uh, you also got Lashkar-e Taiba which your army nurtures. What do you make of Donald Trump and what he's saying about I Pakistan? don't think he even said that. He had one tweet uh, on Pakistan where he got the figures wrong. I don't think Mr. Trump wanted to give the impression that America doesn't pay its debt. And uh, our, the coalition support fund is not aid to Pakistan, it's the money Pakistan is due for the work already done fighting terrorism. As I said before, if we actually want to find a solution, then we have to sit together and find a solution. If you want to do populist politics like Mr. Modi or Mr. Trump does, then we're never going to end extremism or terrorism. Yes. You have to focus on the issue. You have to focus on actually countering violence, extremism and defeating terrorism. We're not even having a conversation on how to counter violent extremism. And you know why? Because counter violent extremism is an Islam Pacific. You have extremists in, of every religion. You have extremists in Myanmar, you have extremists in India, you have extremists in America, and you have extremists in Pakistan. So not only do we have to defeat extreme, uh, terrorism, we also have to conversation about combating extremism. You don't seem to like Prime Minister Narendra Modi very much. He is India's most popular politician in many decades. Sergi, uh, I, as I said, I can't take partisan uh, positions uh, on uh, Indian politicians. There have been many politicians in the BJP that I have respect. I have appreciated the work they've done or attempted to do towards peace towards Pakistan. Unfortunately, uh, some politicians uh, choose to do more populist, more hate-driven politics, feed off the negative emotions of people, split communities on ethnic religious lines and I don't believe that's positive for any country he's that's not country that's po not co positive for my country or India he's winning election after election beloved fair enough but is winning what's important is doing the right thing what's important and I think India will decide in its history when the history books are written who did the right thing extremism is a big problem in Pakistan how would you deal with that um, uh, extremism is, a, is absolutely ex uh, an issue in Pakistan, but what we're doing at the moment is highly focused on the kinetic element, on the military element. Pakistan had come up with a national action plan which had a whole more holistic approach, which addressed all our sort of issues within society, hate speech, a whole structural reforms of FATA and things that we need to get done. And that's the way forward for Pakistan to deal with its extremism. But I also believe we have to look at our curriculum, we have to look at what we're teaching our kids, what we're tolerating in society, not only in Pakistan, but also in India. We can't toler tolerate prejudice, we can't tolerate misogyny, we can't tolerate discrimination, we can't tolerate hate. And if we don't tolerate these things, then there won't be any space for extremism. Well, you've spoken passionately. This is also your first interview to Indian media, so I'm going to let our viewers make up their minds on what Bilawal Zardari Bhutto has just told us. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Bilawal, such a pleasure for joining us. And what a beautiful day to be out. It was snowing Thank like you. crazy. I send when my best came to here. the people of India. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was Bilawal Zardari speaking exclusively to India today, and with that, it's a wrap of our week-long coverage from the World Economic Forum in Davos. It's been exhausting, tiring, a bit frustrating, but also hugely rewarding. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage. I'm now a certified expert on walking in melting snow. On the first day, we were slipping. We were all over the place. Now it's easier. Of course, it's also time now to take the flight back to Delhi. We'll miss this fresh air. Completely different. It's like being in the midst of an oxygen chamber. Lots of fresh air. But Delhi is waiting. India is waiting. So thank you very much for joining us through this week for all the wonderful feedback we got for our coverage on the newsroom. I look forward to seeing you again. Till then, from all of us here in the India Today newsroom team in Davos, goodbye, good night. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.